Welcome to Our View. I am the producer and host, Lori Hall Smithers. And this show airs on Channel 17 on Sunday at 3.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on Monday at 7 a.m. on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 p.m. among other times. Now I want to start today a little differently because I am so pleased and honored that my husband William Smithers was chosen by this station to win their Champion Media Access Award of the Year, the first one chosen. And what I am now showing is the certificate or award that he got from the Congress of the United States at Lois Capps for his service to the community. Now, he also, was it, is, this, is this up enough? You were going to give me a cue. I, I have uh, someone uh, as a guest who has, knows more about this than I do. He also had an award from the state. The uh, congressional one was from Lois Capps in the Congress, and the state was from Hannah Beth Japs Jackson, and the Senate, the state Senate. And he and I both are so grateful for these awards. He gave a speech, an acceptance speech, uh, thanking this TV station and encouraging people to follow whatever they felt strongly about. And he has done that, not only in shows when he was my co-producer and also uh, the co-host of a show called SB Dash Just Between Us. And I mention that show because it's on the internet and all of our shows are up there on the internet. And he has also been pleased to sponsor this show, Our View. And this show is streamed from the station, tvsb.tv. Now, I want to thank not only the station and Matt Schuster, who has won awards himself, like a couple of years ago, the National Alliance of, of TV Stations, named Matt the uh, Leader of the Year, and his predecessor, Carrie, is now in Pasadena, and she's president of the National Alliance. And I have to thank both of them because Carrie taped Bill's speech of acceptance. And it is on Facebook, Bill's in my place, and other places on the internet where Bill encourages people to follow whatever they believe in. And he himself is now doing it as a writer. It's a little more difficult for him to get around the older we get. And he wanted me to particularly thank Newshawk, who prints his letters to the editors of what he believes. He's against fracking, and he also uh, is against the big oil power. And there are, we have shows on SB Dash, Just Between Us, about that. Now, I also want to thank Ali Adamick, who was one of the uh, winners uh, at the honors party, where Bill was named champion, media champion, and Ali was, th was thanked for being the volunteer of the year. And she now is a volunteer on this show, Our View. So thank you, Ali. You richly deserve your award also. Now, Matt Schuster, who is the executive director, was uh, named the Leadership Award by the media people. And our guest today, Skip Stecker, welcome Skip, was named, I believe, 
by the American Disc Jockey Association. Uh, Disc Jockey of the Year, is that yes, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Well, congratulations to you two. We're just full of awards here. It's, it's I, I think uh, Bill also wanted me to mention, and I, I don't believe I did. Did I mention that his original awards was when he was a young man on Broadway? And his first award was in 1951, where he played Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet with Olivia de Havilland. His wow. second award was in 1971, I mean 1957, excuse me, I, I do know it was 57 before I knew him, where he won the Obie Award for being the young poet in Chekhov's The Seagull with Betty Field. And so we are just delighted that in the twilight of our years, we both received awards, I, I for being a producer and Bill the champion supporter of this uh, station. And he's going to continue writing. And if uh, I'm lucky, uh, he may even be on this show once in a while. Now, welcome Skip. Skip. Thank you. I first met Skip when he helped this station in 2011 for, uh, we were just in Goleta, two different places. We didn't have a place. And then he helped with the move to this location. And I think we're all very grateful, Skip, for that. But, but you do so much more. Uh, the American DJs uh, named you the top country uh, DJ of the year. That's one of them. And uh, you're now with UCSB. Yes, I'm at the UCSB Department of Music. Right. And I'm the production and public events manager out there. Uh-huh. And I think the one thing is that First of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me on your show. I appreciate that. Um, exactly what Bill talks about is people wanting to be, telling people to be who they want to be and be, be everything that they want to be. Uh, I, I basically follow that same uh, idea in what I do myself personally, and that's what I instill in a lot of the students that I work with at UCSB as well, is to, to be what they want to be, to be anything that they want to be. Yes. And so I just feel honored to be in your presence as well. well. Thank you. Uh, I am a former college professor and I can uh, identify because it's exciting to help these young people start their careers and to get the training needed to do so. Now you talked about a, a young man who was in London who started out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, um, a lot of the students at UCSB find out uh, you know, I basically retired from the inter entertainment industry uh, when I was 50, and now I'm dating myself. But uh, and then but I do, decided. Or do you still MC? Uh, I and, do. And I, DJ. I still do. Places, and you have your management company. Yes, I do. I sure. still have my management company. Uh, I manage my daughter's career. My daughter, who's in Nashville, she works for Big Machine Record Group. Uh, she still writes, but she also does royalties, mm -hmm. making sure that people get paid, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you appreciate as well. Um, yes. <laughs> the <laughs> uh, but the thing about the music industry is, is, you know, after the daughter had moved away, I still wanted to give back. And so my first attempt was to come to TV Santa Barbara to give them my experience both in production, entertainment, and that whole background. And we thank you, we're yeah. grateful. <laughs> and, and I love doing that, and I love watching the growth of, of the interns and the young students that have so much talent and they have so much to look forward to. And if I can do anything to help them be who they wanna be as well, I'll, I'll do that. I'll give them you know, the, some voice of my experience. The thing that's very interesting is when I took the job at UCSB, it was only going to be a temporary job. Um, I had left here to, to pursue personal business on my own, and uh, they offered me a job that I couldn't refuse. I went out there, and I really fell in love with the Department of Music. Um, very different for me in the sense of it's more classical, it's mm -hmm. more uh, highly trained. These are incredibly talent, talented students that come there, and they have incredibly talented professors out there. One of the things that I found out is that they all want to try and figure out how to make it in the entertainment business. And you were asking about some of the people. Well, it's, it's very much going out there, doing what you do best, and learning on how you can go about making your way in the world. This young man, 
in the world of modern day technology, went out and did a, he plays flute, classical flute. He did a number as a flute player that went viral. And it went so viral that he ended up being a guest on the Jimmy Kimmel Live show. And it went viral, it started in England and just blew up. Well, from that very fact, he is now presently touring uh, in England right now with a fellow, another UCSB student by the name of, uh, and I'm talking about Azim Ward. His partner in this is a guy named Timmy uh, Lazinski. And they're both from the Bay Area, but they go to UCSB and they are now touring the, the UK, playing a mixture of classical flute music along with modern electronic technology. And at the same time, he's beatboxing on the flute. Now this is taking contemporary, classic, and modern, and all sticking it together. That's these, wonderful. These are people doing exactly what you were saying, Bill, is, and you say, yeah. is about being and dreaming who they are wanting to be. So. And when you said London and England, my ears really perked up because my daughter and I are going to London the 1st of October to teach an acting intensive. Boy, we we yeah. have uh, taught for a school over there who have sent us students uh, in our Santa Monica where uh, we mainly teach. And then we taught for another school over there two years ago. And now the former students have asked us to come back on our own to teach acting and directing and writing. And so we're gonna be teaching a week long intensive from October 5th to 10th. And I would invite your two men to come, except you said that you probably- I think they're they would, gonna be coming they back. They probably wouldn't be in England when we're there. <laughs> but I thought it would be fun to have two guys oh, from yeah. Santa Barbara in our intensive. That would be, uh, <coughs> and they, they would they would be London. the type to go ahead and, and take that on. I think yeah. they do go through London, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, obviously these people know how important what you do is out there that they've asked you back even as graduate students yes. to have you come back and, and teach. It's London actors who have, uh, they were sent here by a school that asked us to teach them and then we taught two years ago at another school and um, they've asked us just to come back on our own, which we're doing. We're teaching in a space that's between the Thames and Soho. <laughs> so it's, I think it's quite a good location. Now, I just have to ask, uh, even though I'm not the interviewer, I just It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just we'll very, just have a conversation I, I'm just here. very interested in this. Is, is the focus on the space, I mean, do you, I shouldn't say not on the space, is the focus solely on the actors, nothing I mean, you don't worry about props, you don't worry about the set, you just strictly work on the actors and their actor skills. Well, uh, then we also are gonna have directors in the group. Okay. And when we have a director, we take it from the standpoint of the director. Are the actors achieving what you've worked with them on and, and uh, what you want? Uh, so, and writers, I think there's a few people who are bringing in their own work that they've written that they want our feedback on. but. <clears throat> Mostly, uh, we just try to help the actors use themselves, use what they know and use themselves. And as I told you, I wrote a 350-page book <laughs> explaining all this, which many universities use. I don't know if any, you know, at UCSB use it or not, uh, but uh, it's been out for quite a while. I like <laughs> the fact that you're, you know, that you're teaching and bringing them out and getting them to use, <laughs> you know, use what they got. Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. that is- And what they know. Yes, mm -hmm, and what they mm -hmm. know. So, um, I think there's a lot to learn from this and in the sense of, of that whether, you know, your focus is on acting, but it just seems also like they could very much be used in other entertainment worlds as well. Yes, I yes. mean, not just, I mean, you do focus on the acting and the directing, but I could see it people of all different types of entertainment. Could well, one of my from. best students was Roseanne Cash. Oh, wow. She studied with me and, and she applied what she learned to her singing. And Barbara Streisand studied with Strasberg and uh, Lainey Kazan and, uh, and many vocalists have applied uh, our techniques to their performance as vocalists. And is that, is that, I'm just kind of, interested in this because 
Is it in how they perform, I mean, how they are portraying their song with, or their performance with their body and with their emotions, with their facial expressions? I mean, how would you... With their whole being. Their whole being. That's and the term. And if they're conscious of their facial expressions, they're not working correctly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because it's what they're know. feeling and uh, what is inside them. Sounds like I have a lot to learn, too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Yes. So, uh, what do you feel is the most satisfying for you to do as an events coordinator at UCSB? You know, this is a, I get this question asked more often than you, than you can imagine, hmm. but it's still a great question. I think the best thing that I can tell you is, like any project that you put together, it's a tremendous amount of prep work and, and, and practice and rehearsals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and getting things done right. And then when that curtain comes up for the first time or opens for the first time and the, you've gone past your first downbeat and the actual, it is starting to go, that moment is the greatest pleasure in my world when the play is rolling mm -hmm. or the vocal performance is rolling. I get a tremendous high a big lift off my shoulders of pressure. Uh, it's just the best feeling in the world. It, and, and I don't know if, it, uh, you might experience it differently, but that's how I experience it. It's, it's that, that feeling. And the next best feeling is when the curtain closes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, and I know the performance is over with. Mm -hmm. And those two things are very critical in how I perceive what I have just been part of. Oh, I understand, because I've done a lot of directing in my past life, <laughs> even though my husband has been the main director in our family, but I've done much directing too. Particularly when I was a college professor, I taught directing and directing a lot in you know, all the shows. So you also have been involved with the Fiesta here? Yeah, uh, for the longest time, <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. okay. And from a very, very young age, uh, I was involved in the children's parade, uh, very much been a part of it throughout the years. My sister, who's also uh, was part of it, um, my sister was the beautiful one in the family. She got all <laughs> the looks and all the smarts and all everything. And so she was always out there and, and she was, I was just very proud of my sister. Mm -hmm. And she's still with us, but... Uh, I was always very much involved in Fiesta, and I always liked when events went well. And that led to me, I think, being more involved in that was an easy transition for me in, when I entered the entertainment world and making sure that, and I, and I hope I can explain this the best way, when I do an event, there is an overall effect that I want the audience to experience. I want them to be a part of it, I want them to be involved, and I want them to be connected. Whatever the event is, okay? I, want I the, agree. I, the, I want those actors to connect with them. I, I want the performers to connect. And that's what drives me in the way I put performances and, and events together. And that was what was important to me at Fiesta was whether I was doing the uh, Noches de Ronda at the courthouse or whether I was doing the um, bands uh, out at uh, one of the Mercados, it was important to make that connection to get the people connected to whatever it is they were watching. And we're talking about a very vast array of performance and oh, types. Yes. So I've been involved in a very small way in that uh, some of the girls who have been up for the spirit of Fiesta have come to me for private lessons to work on their speeches. You know, so they would feel you know, more that, secure. And I, I've got to tell you, that's really important. One of the, my best things that I got to do is to be involved in the uh, spirit selection process. Mm -hmm. These, it's not just the girl performing, okay, or the young man performing, because we do have both. Um, I was around for our first uh, male spirit. Um, Ryan was his name. And and basically, the the fact is, is that their families are totally behind this. Mm -hmm. This is culturally usually generational too. And they 
can very much learn from what you have done and what you've done with your studio in making them feel and getting their message across. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not <laughs> only important for them to be able to dance, it's also important for them to connect. Right. They are representing Old Spanish Days Fiesta here in Santa Barbara, which is the biggest event. You know, it used to be on par with the Rose Parade. It's still connected historically that way. But the point is, is that what you guys have done is, I think, definitely helped add to the grace, the poise, and the magnificence of our Fiesta Old Spanish Days events with their ability to communicate and connect with people. And that's part of, you know, the private lesson work when the, the girls come to me for private lessons. At one time, I was asked to judge the junior spirit, and I said no because I was going to be teaching some of the senior spirits. So Bill judge the junior spirit and he just enjoyed it so he thought it was wonderful the talks it, it that is. these young young little girls gave. Yes. They, they give it their all, their families are totally behind it. It's, mm -hmm. It is truly a multicultural promoted event although there is the vocal piece or the person that's the dancer and the and the singer it's the whole family. They rehearse with them with their families, their yes. families are behind it. Costs a lot of money to be a, a dancer. Well, yes, their costumes, time. their lessons, and, and then if they take acting or speech lessons, why well, it costs more too. But it's money well spent. I think so. I think a lot of people would For not. their entire future life. My daughter and I just went back to the Midwest for a reunion uh, of a Sound of Music group that I had directed. And so many of them said being in that show just was uh, good training for our entire lives, you know, because it was a long time ago. I could very much see that. I mean, mm -hmm. what a beautiful piece to have done or been a part of. I know yes. that oh, my love wife that music. Yes. loves this. I mean, she loves to record it and anytime, and she loves it. And of course, she loves Julie Andrews. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, she loves, she's seen some different theatrical versions of it. And she loves those just as much. So it's, it's, I think it's a good learning tool because it's, it's a good way of learning all the different aspects like you, you mm -hmm. say you guys are teaching. Boy, talk about being absorbed in a, a play that is, has a happy appearance from the outside, but it's dealing with a very dark time in our, in our, in our yes. world. I knew Mrs. Von Trapp briefly. And she said she couldn't bear to go back to their home. Uh, because the Nazis had taken over their house and they had even executed people in the front yard. And she just couldn't bear to go back there because of that. But I noticed Julie and Diane Sawyer went back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but Mrs. Maria Von Trapp, I don't believe I did. I did watch that interview <laughs> and I thought that was pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a time period that, um, uh, yeah, I would think that's a very dark period in our in our life and, oh, yes. and although every time I watch Sound of Music I know what they're dealing with I know what the subject the underlying subject is mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is don't you always come out feeling good after watching the Sound of Music? Oh yes even though I remember most of the audience was in tears at the end it affected them so and uh, the music director uh, cast my daughter as Maria Wow. And I said, you do all the casting, and then I'll step in and help with the, you know, the directing. So we both had very, very fond feelings for the entire cast and the reunion that we attended recently. Now our next trip is to London <laughs> to teach acting intensive. And do you want to tell uh, anything about uh, what's coming up at, that you're doing? Are you uh, being a, a master, an MC somewhere, a DJ? Uh, what's on your plate? Skip? Well, you know, I really appreciate <laughs> to asking me about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally have always got events that I'm doing where I'm hosting as an MC. A lot of people see me, uh, a lot of people know me because of the fact that I do a lot of DJing. And, yeah, and, and when did the American uh, uh, DJ Association name you the Country Music DJ of the Year? The Country Music Year was in 1990. Well, they give it out in 98, 
I but see. it was for 97. Okay. And so that's so, when I got that. It's been a while. Yes. But I've also been nominated, or I actually have won the award later for, as you said, for uh, just the DJ of the mm -hmm. year. And mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure. It's, it's, it's one thing to be, to be able to play music. It's another thing to represent what you're doing and get people involved. It's important to pull people into the event. And, you know, I'll do anything uh, I do. You know, we have a show here on TVSB. Uh, Scott Topper hosts it. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of these people are people that I know from that. They've, we've either done things together, we learn from each other. But it's more than just being a disc jockey, although that's the fun part. Uh, whether I'm working in a nightclub or working in Vegas or wherever I might be working, it's also connecting as an MC and a host and pulling people into the event. Now we have two minutes left, so tell whatever you want to tell in these two minutes about yourself or the well, events or, or continue what you're saying. Uh, okay, it's up to you. let me tell you this. The, the fantastic part is I'm lucky enough to be at UCSB. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get a chance, and I would personally ask you, or invite you and Bill to come out to see any of our events at UCSB Department of Music. I am a 100% supporter of it. They have got incredibly talented young people, whether it is our wind ensemble, or our jazz ensemble, or our percussion ensemble. Um, we've got an opera. We're doing opera scenes coming up, and it's going to be directed by the uh, famous director, David Grabarkowitz, mm. uh, who's right now at the El Paso Opera. And uh, Ben Brecker is our opera uh, coach. We've got incredible singers out there. Michelle Mark uh, Gervais has got the chorus. We've got wonderful, wonderful entertainers. And I'm just saying it's the best kept secret in Santa Barbara is the music department's events at the end of every quarter and then at the end of the year. And we've just also got another event called Montage. And this is a, a compilation of all these different areas in one show. Now, do you put notices like in the Independent uh, and we, Montecito Journal for these we, events? We do. So um, we'll watch that and hopefully we can attend some things. Yes, there. I'm going to make sure that you attend, but well, I'm going to invite you. everybody to come if out. health wise can handle it. Or I'll, if make, I'm here. I'll do it. I have special <laughs> arrangements I can help you get there and, <laughs> and be able to see a wonderful show. Well, that, uh, that sounds really uh, nice. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, and you know I'm a big fan of you and Bill. Well, thank you. Now, uh, Bill did Santa Barbara Theater of the Air, uh, which was uh, taped at UCSB, two years, and he's donated all of those tapes to the UCSB library. So and we have a beautiful new library. Being yes, built. so uh, we have that connection too. I was in a few, and he was a director. And of that is. I wish more people knew about that, and hopefully now with these donation of these tapes, because there's a strong connection between this television station and its predecessors, and UCSB's uh, both theater as well as their music departments as well. Yes, yes, and we're pleased that this station has uh, been so supportive of UCSB. So I thought we had two minutes left. Am I wrong, Tyler? Did you put up two minutes? I wish to thank uh, our crew, Diane and Mark in the uh, booth, and uh, Tyler.